all my ideas start in the sketchbook and that's what I want you to do I want you to be get yourselves a sketchbook and create your rough ideas in them just doodle explore shape possibilities don't put too much effort into the thinking part approach it as a process of discovery you're going to discover the shapes and explore design possibilities in the sketchbook I happen to like these curvilinear abstract shapes and if you you see a number of my pieces you realize that I compose mostly within that type of design I think my inspiration comes from nature seeing rocks that have been tumbled by the ocean or eroded by the wind they seem to take on these irregular but curvilinear abstract shapes we're going to begin to construct the basic form. I'm going to show you how I come up with my designs. And then we'll continue to build the piece. Refine it, finish it off. And the final process is applying gluing the watercolor paper that you created in the previous step. Notice when I look at this, the edges are nice and smooth. Everything has been filed down and sanded. To a high degree of craftsmanship. This is the toggle clasp that I make. I think they um, that it works well with the overall design. It keeps in character with the uh, the paper. I wanted to show you the different ways that I resolve the clasp. We just looked at the toggle. Here's another one that I use the wire technique. We're going to be doing lots of link projects and I'll be teaching you how to do this to to end your links, the clasp that will be used to create a link necklace. That's really strong. It's this technique that I have of wrapping the wire around the, in this case, silk. Also take a look at the back of this. Totally smooth. I have a method of working the cord or the chain through the piece. That's my watercolor painting on the top. You see the action of the salt that we talked about in the previous video. I hand painted the magnolia and I used banana paper in the back and let the when I stained the edge of the watercolor paper, this is about seven layers thick, it's thick. I allowed, I dampened the paper and allowed a little paint to bleed in. I like to have a clearly articulated front and back. But notice the two different ways I, I um, attached the, the cord. Here, if you can see in the video, it bulges up a little bit. The paper bulges up. And I'll describe how to do that. I actually like this way very much. This is a much more labor-intensive way. It has to do with the creation of an internal channel. And then you thread your cord through when you're finished. So anyway, let's get started. I think I mentioned previously, I'd like you to get yourself a sketch pad and always be working on designs. The more you draw, the more ideas you'll, you'll discover. And as I said before, I like these curvilinear shapes. I don't try too hard. I just kind of have fun with the process of drawing and see where it takes me. Hmm, that would work if that was upside down. That's very similar. All of this is similar to what I've already done. But the beauty of it is you can, you can go on forever. Innumerable variations on an existing theme. Here, a piece like this, for example, I had to come up, down, and around. I could make that a two-part piece. What if I integrate another piece? within that.
Huh. That might not be a bad idea. Now let's make it really dark and graphic. How would that attach? I could I could somehow link it together over here and over here and then I could have a cord or a chain work into it this way. And then some fancy watercolor effect on a surface. And then maybe even sprinkle in a little bit of, of the what are they? The um, metallic luster powder that I have. A little bit of gold and copper color towards the edge. That might be a nice piece. I gotta think about that. We'll save that for a later date. In fact, that, that would, uh, an idea that came into my mind is you, you can make a singular piece. This project, I, I have my students design three pieces. A, um, a single pendant, normally, and an interlinked pendant. An idea like this would be good for an interlinked pendant. Something students will also do regarding the interlinked pendant is they'll take a basic shape like this. series. Uh, you could use any simple little shapes you want. I'm just doing this to jot the idea down quickly. So if you have a slightly irregular square shapes constructed out of your watercolor paper and and you have a channel built into them where you could run a cord See what I'm getting at over here? The watercolor paper on top. And the cord will come up and around. That would be nice. So let's see, where am I going with this? Let's take a shape like that. It's like a very large teardrop. The reason why I'll always work from new forms, I save all my old designs. I have drawers full of old designs, but I'd rather, instead of using an old one, create a brand new one because in the creation of a brand new one I inevitably come up with a variation. No two are ever the same and I think that's fun to do that. They're similar yet different. Okay. What do I think? If I come up and around See how that's different from that? Another idea, instead of going vertical, this would hang sort of like that, like we did over here. I'm thinking, I, I was about to do that, but I'm, I'm changing my mind. I, I'm thinking I want to come up with a... piece that hangs horizontal. Okay, that's kind of different. I like that. Be flexible with your ideas, your drawing ideas. They're not written in stone. If you come up with a shape, 
and as you look at it, it, it suggests additional possibilities. Explore them. Get them down on the paper. I would have the cord go in like that and come out there. That I'm going to make that one. That's going to be nice. So, I'd like you to get a sketchbook. and draw in it on a regular basis. Your ideas should start on paper first, although they're going to be constructed in paper, but they should start in the sketchbook first, refined, developed, and then executed three-dimensionally using the technique I'm about to show you. And we're going to go for that one. So the next step is to actually begin to cut it out. Now, having worked out a few designs, I'm going to take the one I liked, and it was this one over here, and I'm going to transfer that to the paper. I'm not going to be too concerned with making an exact copy, but I'm going to make it in the spirit of what I've already designed. And there may be some corrections on this as I go along. Go up. Down, around, and... Okay. What I'm doing when I'm drawing like this is I'm, I'm trying to establish some kind of fluid continuity to the shape. In other words, I, wa I want the lines to flow into one another nicely. Let's go with it. So that's that's my original thought. And and what I did is I I curved this area more. I streamlined it a bit more. So the next step is to cut out the shape. Okay. Let's cut out the piece. Now when I cut it I'm cutting on a self-healing cutting board. If we do this in class, I have these for every student. Notice as I cut, I'm not even lifting the, the blade. I, I kind of rotate the paper rather than move my hand around like this. It's much easier just to to keep the paper moving. Where am I? Okay. And this is not a time for distraction. So it's time to concentrate on what you're doing. You don't use, need a tremendous amount of pressure here. You're just cutting through a single piece of paper. But what you do need is a sharp blade. Once a, bl a blade becomes slightly dull, it, it wants to tear the paper rather than cut the paper. And I'm paying attention, paying careful attention to lining up my cut. So there we go. Beautiful. This becomes a, a layer for the piece. I need to cut out, I don't know, five or six more. This little window that we have just made becomes a useful device for exploring 
the abstract watercolor paper that you built up and find in areas that might make successful pieces of jewelry. Huh, that's, that's rather dark, but very interesting. I like that. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. Let me bring it up close. There we go. That would make a, a striking piece. We'll, we'll keep that in mind. In fact, what I'll do, we'll jump to that, that step right now. What I'm going to do is take my pencil and I use this little window that I cut out and I'll trace there. I'll trace that and later on I'm gonna cut that out. I already have my top layer that I'm going to add to the form that I'm about to build up. Now, the next thing I have to do, having created the basic shape, is I need to, no way of getting around this, need to cut out a bunch more. Actually, I'm going to cut out five more that'll be enough and the top layer will make it six six layers thick so it's gonna be a nice chunk of a piece well let's reconsider that how many layers if we create a back like this this is four layers thick so we'll want to cut out we have one already one two th three four Notice too, I'm, I'm being economical with my paper. I'm kind of lining, I'm not starting in the middle, I'm lining everything up, making them fit into one another, integrate one another, so I don't waste paper. I can get more jewelry out of this piece of paper, no need to. Spread things out and be wasteful. So, having done that, I will proceed to cut these out. Okay, I've cut out four. One, two, three, four. The next step will be to glue them together, resulting in the basic shape. Then, having done that, I'll let them set up and dry after, after maybe an hour or so. Actually, after a day if you let it air dry. I usually throw them in a toaster oven at 150 degrees um, after about an hour of drying and then, and then that'll, that'll continue, to, continue to dehydrate the paper and the glue and I can start filing the same day. But after they are set up and I've given them a little bit of a curve, I'll sand the edges. Then the final step to finishing the piece will be to cut out the watercolor that we, we selected and it, glue that to the surface. So it'll be a total of one, two, three, four, five layers thick, including a few thinner pieces that I use for the, the back, the back part. Just a quick recap, for the watercolor paper pendant project, we want to have a singular piece that we're working on right now and an integrated piece where you attach two or three forms or more to create a necklace. The next step in the process of uh, building this piece of jewelry is to assemble the layers that we have just cut up. Have my glue. This is regular Elmer's glue. 
but it's important that you use this glue, this white glue. It creates a very strong resinous bond between the layers and um, it really it really makes it indestructible. Okay. Butter the glue on. I don't scrape it thin. I apply the glue fairly thick and spread it around with a paintbrush, a cheap paintbrush. Then lay in the next layer. I don't press too hard. I don't want to squeeze out the glue. I simply use enough pressure to make it flat. And then I butter it up again. It's important to have a fairly thick layer of glue because the purpose of the glue isn't simply to hold the paper in place. Of course, that's one of the purposes, but primarily the glue itself becomes a structural element. I'm making a sandwich of paper and resinous fiber. The glue becomes a resinous fiber. If you don't have enough glue, the piece will actually, it won't be as stiff. It'll, it'll have a certain amount of flexibility that, that really diminishes from the overall quality of what you're constructing. Okay, now the next thing I do Having done that, you're going to get glue all over you that goes with the process of making it. I press it lightly with my fingers to make sure all the layers, there's no lifting of layers. What I mean by lifting of layers is you don't want, I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but you don't want the layers to start to separate. So for about five minutes, you really have to work with it. Right now the piece is basically flat. It's glued together. It's been maybe a minute or two. But you want to do at this point is give it a slight curve. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna bend it that way. I'm gonna bend it on a can like this. The curve is gonna be subtle. It's not gonna be extreme. But it, I think it enhances the overall look of the piece. There we go. Slight curve. What I'll do for the next five or ten minutes is I'll, I'll come back to it, I'll check it, just to make sure I don't have any separation starting to occur between the layers. Don't worry about this irregularity, all of this roughness that you see. You're going to sand that off. You're going to work the edges until it's one nice homogeneous mass. It's going to look like one piece of paper not four pieces of paper. The way you curve it is very important. If you're creating a vertical piece, a piece that's going to hang like this, well, you want to curve it from left to right, sort of like that. I don't know if the camera will pick this up. You see that curve? It falls nicely on the body when it's curved that way, and it makes sense. It's logical to curve it that way if the piece is vertical. If the piece is going to be horizontal, like this, and you can see the difference, the way it's, it's hooked up to the cord, it'll fall horizontal. And I bend it like that. I bend it along the horizontal axis. You see how it curves that way? Curves from, still curves from left to right, but now it's on the horizontal axis. It's important 
every few minutes to come back to it and and make sure it's doing what you want it to do. See how I'm rubbing it with my fingers? I'm just I'm not I'm not really squeezing it a lot. I'm just guaranteeing that it's going to lay flat and I'm going to have that curve. It's nice. Yeah. 